you don't make enough money and that is not okay. I'm Nolan with seven easy and actionable tips to help you stop being broke and actually make money in Farming Simulator 22, along with some extra tips scattered about. Tip one, starting effectively. We learn ourselves it can be incredibly difficult to dig yourself out of deep debt, especially if you didn't get value out of that debt. If you have maxed out your bank loan and don't have a notable amount of land and the tools to work the land, you will struggle. Most farms can start with one decent tractor and you usually don't have to go into debt to get a nice save going. Get a tractor, get some implements, and you can operate it to get the job done. It doesn't have to be anything special. Spend smarter. I think it's safe to say that most of us will find ourselves in this situation. You don't have a bunch of money, but as you're scrolling through the discount section of the store, something catches your eye. It is a discount solution to a problem you are expecting to face, so you decide to purchase it. The literal month after you purchase this new piece of equipment, you scroll back through the discount section and you find something that could have revolutionized your farm, but you don't have the cash anymore. It's either miss out or you need to sell the thing you just bought and lose cash value. Uh, I try to solve this by just recognizing the pieces of gear that truly will revolutionize my farm and work towards those. If a piece of equipment comes on and it's like, yeah, this is gonna make a big difference, at that point, I think it's fair to purchase it. Time the market. Unless you are playing with mods, there is a best time to sell your harvest. You can find this by scrolling down to the menu right here. Even if your grain has to sit in your trailer for a while, you'll get paid more for the same amount of work. Wait until the best time to sell, take advantage of the higher price. Bonus tip for you, how the pricing works. The way price are calculated is price per thousand units, okay? If you have 10,000 units of wheat, take the current price, which is like 89 or, you know, that's a number that would be fair, it's 89, so you get $89 per thousand. If you got 10,000, you're gonna get $890 for that amount of wheat. You can also download the Time Saving Stock Check mod. I use it a lot when my farm gets more complex. It just kind of helps make it easier. You reap what you sow. It's typically somewhere around the 24 month mark into the game that I'm able to sustain myself enough to save my harvest for the best time of year to sell. At this point, it's time that you need to start getting some more land. If you spend money to make money, you need to plant so you can actually harvest more. Take some time, scout out a nice piece of land uh, that could add to your yield without adding a bunch more travel time. Okay, find yourself that piece of land, get planting, you're gonna make more money. Productions. There's no escaping it. If you're trying to get the biggest equipment in the game faster, you need to make more money for the same amount of work you're already doing. This is where productions come in. These bad boys take your products and they turn them into products of higher value. Okay, it costs a little bit of money. Granted, there is a high upfront cost to entry. You need to have some money stocked up and then you can make the work you're doing even more valuable to kind of get to that same point in less amount of time. Get 100 grand lined up, turn your wheat into flour, profit. It's, it's solid. Great demand. Back when I was playing FS14 all the time on my phone, there was three options for great demand. You had your wheat, you had your corn, you had your canola. And only one, there was only three options for great demand at that point. So one came up all the time. There wasn't seasonal sale numbers. So you would wait for great demand to hit and all of a sudden you're just making bands. But that's not the case anymore. Okay, great demand is a multiplier on top of your current crop value. That means if you have prices really low right now and you hit great demand, it's gonna come up a nice chunk, but if prices typically can get way up here anyways, it would still be better just to wait until the best time of year to sell. The one instance where it is better to go for great demand is when you're getting close to your sale time anyways, and it pops up, it's like, yeah, we're gonna sell that early, we're gonna make extra money for the same amount of work. So the big thing is, if great demand comes up and you're near your sale time anyways, it is great to jump on. Otherwise, your time is more valuable. Wait till the best time of year to sell. You're gonna see more money. Animal husbandry. I saved this one for last because animals are really only profitable if you're managing the rest of your farm effectively. If you're buying wheat to feed your chickens, you're not making that much money. I'm sorry, it's how it goes. If you're buying grass to feed your sheep, you're not making that much money. I'm sorry, it's how it goes. If you want your animals to be profitable, you need your farm to be able to feed them. Animals on their own can be highly profitable, but you cannot be putting money 
into the animals and into feeding them and expecting high returns. You need to buy the animals, you need to be able to feed them for free or just for the labor cost, and then the profits are gonna be there. So if you wanna run animals on your farm, you need to be feeding them and producing what you can with your farm. And this is a bonus tip, mods. There is a special mention here because you don't need mods to be profitable, but wanting them is a choice. Um, there are plenty of overpowered implements and vehicles um, that you can find on the mod hub. And there's also like the government subsidies mod. Uh, that one is basically free money if you don't care about the progress and you just want to run 18 tractors down a field as fast as you can, right? Um, so that one's noteworthy if you're just looking to have fun and not actually have to grind out a farm, you know? All in all, the biggest tip I have for you is to enjoy the game in the way you want to enjoy it. Personally, I like to grind out really slow starts where I'm massively in debt, like our current $500,000 debt No Man's Land series. And I mean, that's not for everybody. That's just the way it is. So biggest tip of them all, enjoy the game you're playing. Enjoy the progress. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again.